Hi, I'm John Stieglitz, a research faculty member here at the University of Miami. And we're here at the University of Miami Experimental Hatchery, where we conduct aquaculture research. We're going to walk inside and see some of the different fish species that we work with here at the University of Miami. Inside this facility is where we have our primary uh, hatchery operation. So within the hatchery facility, we raise fish from egg to market size, examining different biological properties and performance attributes of the species that we work with. In this tank, we have American red snapper, with Jonas Trapatatus, which is an iconic species uh, that we're working with right now as part of a federally funded research project, looking at three different species, actually, the red snapper, the Nassau grouper, and the hogfish, all species which have very good market values, we're trying to determine which one is best from a production standpoint in terms of lowest cost of production, best aquaculture performance overall, and these sorts of attributes. So that's the type of research and development activity we do here at the hatchery facility. In these tanks, we have Cobia fingerly. This is another species that we've been working with for years. The Cobia, we work in close collaboration with our industry partner, Open Blue Sea Farms, a US-based company conducting farming operations down in Panama. And this species here, these are almost a month old now in this tank. And so they'll be fully weaned at this point onto a, a dry, inert diet. And at this point, they're at a size where they can be shipped virtually anywhere in the world. And we'll continue to grow out a portion of these for use in our different research trials that we conduct here at the university. These large tanks that are currently holding the American Red Snapper will also be used at different times during the year for our larval production run. So if we need to produce commercial scale quantities of any of the species that we work with, we will typically do so in these large tanks that we have here. We also put in this tank here, you see millions if not billions of rotifers being cultured. This is the first feeding prey item that we utilize with virtually all of our marine fish species that we work with. And so through optimizing the nutritional composition as well as the delivery rate of these live prey organisms, we're able to get very high survival throughout the larval rearing process for the different species we work with. So this is our basic water quality lab and live feeds preparation area. We also use our uh, microscope for larval examination, looking at their growth on a daily rate within this small lab space here. This large recirculating rootstock maturation tank, we have our American red snapper broodstock. Now these are wild caught fish captured off the east coast of Florida and we've conditioned them to spawn in this tank using uh, <clears throat> environmental conditioning methods. And so these fish spawn virtually year round and produce eggs that we then take into the hatchery, hatch them and begin the larval rearing process. Within these replicated tanks, we have a variety of different marine fish species, including juvenile cobia that you see here. Now these are being held here for use in a nutrition trial, looking at digestibility of different feeds at different life stages of the cobia. Additionally, we just concluded a research study looking at use of integrated multi-trophic aquaculture with American red snapper juveniles, whereby we looked at the nutrient uptake rate of a seaweed species that's found here in South Florida that also has a good economic value as a co-product cultured alongside the American red snapper. So the wastewater coming out of the that snapper tank helping to fertilize that seaweed. And that's part of an undergraduate 
research project and is a good example of the types of research that students can get engaged in here at the University of Miami Experimental Hatchery Facility.